My wife though. Worker. My ex-girlfriend and I met in college. She was one of the most beautiful women I'd ever seen. She was usually followed by a swarm of boys. I took a few courses with her over the course of four years, but I never pursued her because, well, all the other men. After class one day, she asked if I wanted to study with her, and the rest is history. So we tied the knot. We began our careers in the same field, but with separate businesses. An industry dominated by men. While she struggled, I had rapid success. During her first year, she changed jobs. She persisted in her battle. She got pregnant with our first child in her third year. She worked her way through the pregnancy. During a normal checkup a few weeks after giving birth, her doctor requested a cervix biopsy. Precancerous cells were discovered in the findings. The doctor recommended us to have additional children as soon as possible since this condition would worsen and a hysterectomy would be required eventually. So, when she felt like it, she became pregnant again. Within a year of each other, she gave birth to another son. Following that, further tests were performed and many doctors recommended us to proceed with the treatment right away since we could not afford to wait. She had her operation done when her two kids were still newborns. She was devastated that she was no longer able to have children, as we had hoped for a big family. She devoted herself to becoming a wonderful mother and she succeeded, is, she became a stay-at-home mom. She was responsible for everything at home. Meanwhile, my career was progressing. I was offered a job with another firm with a significant wage increase. Life is wonderful. When the boys started to school, she volunteered and became a regular there. I should explain that we went to school with close buddies. B and A we saw each other a lot. They had their first child around the same time we did. They have one child. We went on vacations, dinners, and trips. As a family, and we were the best of friends. A the mother returned to work after the birth of her son and is now quite successful. B had a decent employment, as well until about 2001, when it was discontinued. He struggled to find employment in his industry, since the economy was so bad at the time. As they did not want to relocate, it was decided that he would work as a sod while hunting for job where we resided. The X and B did activities with children together. Even while the kids were all in school, they hung together. You can probably infer they had an affair now. I realize this narrative is lengthy, but it is not over. After almost a year of amazing in the morning, B asked X whether she and I had ever discussed A. We were still enjoying a terrific, if not slowing down, connection, so it was all fantasy chat. B wanted to invite a buddy into the bedroom with them. The X concurred. The day arrived, and this person, C, arrived at B's residence. He removed his suit while X and B warmed up. So they had their trio. Following that, the man informed them that he was used to having to pay for so he left a few hundred dollar dollars and asked X if he could have a one-on-one -on -one with X. She said that she needed to think about it and that B would get back to him. C eventually suggested someone else, and a company was established. B was eventually re-employed and had to leave X alone. She dialed a different phone number. She leased a storage container and converted it into a closet slash office. She spent the money on clothing that her clients had asked. She even purchased a vehicle since she didn't want her minivan to be seen at a hotel. The boys had to pay for a decent hotel room. She stored the automobile in a storage facility. Everything was paid for in cash. I'm not aware of her ever bringing money into our life. During the summer, though, we would send the children to various day camps. She said she cut our budget to pay for it. She only worked throughout the school day. She was frequently picking up the boys from school. B would pick them up and keep them till she arrived home on a few rare occasions. Our family life was never jeopardized. I confess that I was working a lot and climbing the corporate ladder. The weekends were reserved for our family. Because of my job schedule, I believed it was ideal to have on weekends. Most evenings, we'd snuggle on the sofa and watch TV. When everything is completed, the year 2016 arrives. We have two sons, one in college and the other a senior in high school. I get a phone call from BX has been admitted to the hospital. He was ambiguous, but he did say she was in a lot of pain. I hurry to the hospital, where my wife is up to a slew of machinery. They'd already cleaned her up and taken x-rays of her. She has a broken jaw, a broken nose, an orbital bone fracture, and a potential concussion. She will make it, but it will be a long journey. A police officer finished his work and departed. Of course, I'm curious about what occurred. Through her sobbing and pain medicines, she was screaming and speaking gibberish. A nurse advised me to let her relax. 
They were about to put her in a room. She gave me a bag containing her clothing. I peered inside and inquired if they were hers since she never wears heels and the outfit was on to me. According to the nurse, this is what they brought from the hotel room. As a result, they shoved me out of the room. I contacted my boys to inform them. Later that night, when the effects of the pills began to wear off, I was able to piece together part of the tale. She faded away once more. I had my youngest kid fill in for her, and I dialed B what made him call me. How did he know about it before I did? What exactly is going on? So B told me what my wife was up to, omitting the adulterer in his role. I was heartbroken. We ultimately get her home after she had jaw surgery. The nose would be patient. She recovered at home. As she became stronger, I learned the whole tale. I phoned and informed her about the affair, as well as B's status as a pimp. B was thrown out. I informed her we were done as she stood up. I asked her to go. She relocated to B's house. I started the divorce process. I've been divorced for five years. I still have feelings for her. It's as if she'd passed away. The pain of bereavement is overwhelming. My sons are aware of what she did. I haven't heard from her since she departed. Update 1. I had a call from my eldest son, R., who was away for the holiday weekend. He received a phone call from a friend informing him that his brother, S., had been in a motorbike accident. He was riding beside him but did not see the crash since he was going ahead. I rushed to the hospital's emergency room. They were cleaning S and taking x-rays of him. I was advised to take a seat and wait for the doctor. I heard my name a few minutes later as I was laying back and closing my eyes. When I glance up, I see my ex standing in the doorway. She inquired about the latest news. I said that I was waiting. She inquired as to if she might sit with me. I motioned for her to take a seat next to me. I haven't seen her in five years since the divorce. I had no idea what to anticipate. I expected her to be deformed as a result of her beating. She wasn't all, despite the fact that her face wasn't as lovely as I remembered. The only difference I saw was that her eyes no longer gleamed. This was a feature I couldn't get enough of. Her eyes didn't appear the same even with the mask on. It's interesting what you observe. Her face used to light up when she smiled. I'm guessing she's simply resting face now. Anyway, as we waited, we had an anxious catch-up conversation. She commented on how much she enjoyed the landscaping I created and how the plants had developed well. This indicates that she has passed by my home, where I have no clue where she lives, and my boys were instructed not to mention her to me. I attempted to get rid of any recollection of her throughout and after the divorce. I replaced the shrubs in the yard since she had designed and planted them. I forgot to note that the interior of the home was also remodeled. I'd even tore down a wall. For months, I had a construction dumpster on my driveway. She inquired as to how I was doing. I'm not sure why, but I was honest that I had brought myself to a halt by working too hard. I did, however, recently see a therapist and join a gym. I've also started riding my bike. She offered that she no longer. She simply left it at that. She remained with B for a few months. She was also seeing a counselor, who advised her to take some college classes related to her major. That took a few years. She is currently working full-time. She said that she had dated seldom, leaving the comment up for me to respond to. I believe the lads were keeping her up to speed on my whereabouts, so I didn't have much to say. The doctor arrived and discussed the nature of the damage. The most significant injury was to his foot and ankle, which were trapped under the bike when it crashed. He was going to have surgery today. Everything is okay. All he has to do now is recuperate and rehab. So depending on his head damage, a little concussion, he'll be until at least tomorrow. I offered my home as a place to stay since I have a room and can work from home. We will finish it today, despite the fact that his mother will want to visit. That will be a process of healing for me. Update 2. My kid is recovering well. He has a long way to go. We've agreed he'll remain here until he recovers. He intends to return to work the following week. His supervisor is arranging for him to work from home. I can barely fit him in the back seat of my SUV because he has to stretch. It would be a nightmare to drive him to and from work every day. Everyone has been wondering about the ex's visit. When she arrives, I leave. I go to the gym or ride my bike. My eldest son attempted to have a sit-down meal with the four of us, but I refused. She has been quite nice. She has not attempted to impose anything. She approaches and sits with our kid. She will prepare supper for them. When she cooks, she brings groceries. When his buddies come over, it may become a little boisterous for me, 
but when there are guests, he forgets about his issue. It would be an exaggeration to say we never converse. Our chats are always about our boys and their life. Update 3. This is my last update. According to the doctor, my kid is mending well. He still has a long way to go in physical therapy. He's stumbling about. I'm still at home. I work from home. I went back to the office to give him some space. Now the ex is doing what many of you have suggested. She is performing little tasks about the home. My youngster is not very neat, so she cleans up after him and does his dishes. She will prepare a supper for him and always leaves room on the table for me. That may be my son's lunch the following day, I tell him. She asked me the other night if I wanted to go out to dinner today since my son's friends were coming over. No, I told her. A bit later, she said that we should go out to eat simply to clear the air. I said, no once more. Finally, I stated because of your acts, we came to an end a long time ago. It took me a long time to recover from what had been lost. I have no plans to rekindle my connection with you, okay, she said. She was aware of our situation. I did say I didn't mind if she came over to see our kid till he returned to his apartment. I thanked her for cleaning up, but it wasn't required. Thank you all for your kind words and encouragement, but I will get through this. My heart has become brittle.